Okay, I'm still playing around with the uh, HeKit SB220 Junker uh, that I'm rebuilding. And since I was only did one tube, I grounded the grid on this one, and I haven't done this one yet. I decided to um, make a video, uh, maybe a quick one, don't know yet. Um, so anyway, this is a um, picture of a uh, trialed tube just basically the plate on top the cathode or the ground at the bottom your heaters coming in and then the control grid in the middle of it basically the heaters heat up the uh, cathode the cathode starts putting out electrons negative electrons and negative like positive so these negative electrons want to go up to the plate um, that has high voltage there's the attraction there and what limits all the electrons from jumping over to the plate is the control grid um, there if the tube was a diode it would not have a control grid and all the electrons would um, be attracted you know to the plate there um, so anyway with the triodes you got the control grid in the middle and that's like the damper or the uh, control right um, so as this you know goes positive a little it opens the gate and the electrons start flowing to the plate so a little bit of control to make a lot of output on it that's a normal triode um, amplifier tube what happens in a grounded grid amplifier is they ground that control grid okay once they ground that how do they you know control the uh, electrons going up to the plate well they do that with the cathode since this is grounded they put the drive or the input in here on the into the cathode why do they do that or make them like that well it's a simple design a lot simpler a lot less parts uh, for one the control grid here when you drive that that's high impedance and you know everybody I think knows that amplifiers work on 50 ohms which is low impedance so you when you have drive coming into a control grid you need some kind of uh, impedance matching transformer or basically you must have a tuner or something to uh, change the impedance from low to high to properly drive a uh, grid driven amplifier with a grounded grid amplifier where you drive in the cathode one advantage of it is for the most part uh, grounded grid tubes are low impedance I think a 3500Z is designed is a hundred ohms a piece for the impedance on the cathode drive here right so why you when you see a pair of 3500Z's at 100 ohms each that's 50 ohms of drive so it's already basically pre-matched to be cathode driven I think other tubes like a 572B if I remember are like 120 ohms I think a sweep tube like a 6LF6 or something is 200 ohms and one of the popular things you'll see is like a 4 sweep tube amplifier would be 50 ohms when they're uh, grounded grid for four of them right so it's simpli simplicity and also it's a pretty rugged design grids are pretty uh, what's the opposite of rugged flimsy or um, easy to blow up easy to overload uh, they're not sturdy the cathode pretty much is so when you ground the grid you're eliminating one of the uh, not sturdy or one of the flimsy problems that you have um, that you don't have with the grounded grid amplifier so it's a sturdy amp when you go with a uh, grounded grid and it's a much less complex amp when you go with grounded grid when I talk about turbocharging you put another grid in between the uh, control grid where your drive comes in and the plate 
that um, it's like the turbo booster. You put uh, some voltage, less than the plate voltage in the turbo, and it really pulls these electrons going forward to the plate, and that's why I call it turbo charge, because it, you know, not exactly, but it works similar to a turbo charger, um, as far as that metaphor, right? But it's a much more complex, and it's much more fragile. I guess fragile is the word I was looking for. Getting old, getting CRS, right? So forgive me. Um, so anyway, the turbocharged um, tube, tri uh, tetrode or pinto mode, is the most fragile, but it has the most gain, meaning it has uh, it takes less drive, but it's the most complicated, but it has the most audio and the most gain. On the other hand, the grounded grid triode is the opposite. It is the least complicated. It's the most rugged of all the uh, configurations. Um, but on the other hand, it um, takes the most drive to drive it in that configuration. And it has the less gain of all of them. Even though the ultimate uh, determination of the output of the tube is going to be the plate dissipation of the tube. Uh, you know, turbocharge and triode, tetrode, all that. That's basically the drive level and the complica uh, how complicated and rugged the amp are. However, um, it's not going to really change the output. Uh, what Again, the limiting factor on your output is the um, plate dissipation. And I put a few tubes together to show the uh, different sizes of tubes. And though you can't really see the plate, the plate is um, basically under the cooling fin. You can see the cooling fin in the 3500Z that cools the plate down internally. And this tube will eat 500 watts. 3500Z, 500 watts. Uh, you can't get around that. Well, if you do, you only can do it temporarily and it's not going to last long. Sure, you could get, you know, you could push this to uh, eat, you know, 1000 watts if you want to. You know, get out, you know, 1,500 watts per tube, you know, maybe even a little more. You can do it temporarily, but it's not going to last long. Um, here we got a 572B rated at 160 watts dissipation, a lot less plate, a lot less cooling. That's a 8877 dud I got, um, 1,500 watts of dissipation, 4CX800. You know, about half the size of a um, 8877. Um, 4CX400 and then a 4CX250. Those tubes are designed to eat a certain number of watts. They have a uh, maximum plate dissipation. Again, you can go over that. And, you know, you can run an amplifier class AB. And there's a certain efficiency somewhere around 65% that you could get. And if you run a class, uh, amplifier class B, you can hit about 70%. And if you run it high class C, uh, you can get about 80% maximum um, efficiency out of it. So you can you know, run it class C and get more efficiency and get more watts out of it. Of course, it's going to be nasty and dirty and all that kind of stuff, you know, running a class C amplifier, even a class B, but you know, you want more watts, that's a way to do it, but I would say it's not a good way to do it. That's why you see all, you know, basically amateur radio and decent amplifiers are going to be class A, B, and they're going to be limited to about 60% uh, efficiency in real life at best. Um, so anyway, that was my thoughts on that. Uh, one of the other things on this um, 3500Z tube, in the old days, they floated the um, control grid, the ground. When they grounded this um, 3500Z grounded grid triode, and they uh, ground the control grid, and again, they put the drive in through the cathode on that, which they do on pretty much every uh, 3500Z amplifier is designed for that. However, in the old days, they floated this control grid. And what I mean by that is they used this um, plate choke and some capacitors in line. These are the actual components from this um, 
tube socket from this SB220. These are the original parts that this design uh, they used back in the day to float this ground. It wasn't directly grounded. And the reason was uh, it put in a little bit of uh, basically negative feedback or degenerative uh, feedback you know for the tube and they thought that hey, it cleans up the signal a little bit uh, stops the parasitics you know putting that little bit of feedback in there so the thought was you know it makes it a better amplifier a cleaner better amplifier modern thinking you know uh, things change over 50 years um, is no go ahead and ground that grid directly so on this bottom tube if you can see this rail here that I put in um, it's grounding that grid directly and these are the components that we took out and this one over here up here has not been done yet you can see that choke it's hard to see there's a cap under there um, there's a cap over here and I think there's one up under there that's the three um, the three, three small caps and then that's the uh, choke that float the grids and by the way if you look at the pinout that control grid is has three pins, pins two, three, and four. The heaters are one and five. The cathode is tied to the heater. So there's not another pin on it on the 3500 z And then the plate here is, of course, on top. And if you can see on that tube there, I wrote, I penciled in the, um, the pin numbers. Basically, one and five here where the heaters come in are close to each other on the 3500Z and then pins 2, 3, and 4 are wider spaced and 2, 3, and 4 are all the control grid I have seen tubes in the past I think from Black Hat where they um, run this ground rail all the way across so they ground it here, 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 and here this one is only grounded here, here, and then there and it's not going up to these grounds um, so I think that's about all I wanted to do today. Um, again, modern thinking is don't float the, um, the grounds anymore. It's a better, more solid amplifier when you just directly uh, ground the control grid. One other thing, though, I did read um, that I didn't know. They say basically when you do ground the grids, you want to have a glitch resistor in the plate because they the thinking was this here um, which ground which helped ground the uh, control grid which floated it was kind of worked as a fuse it was like a buffer so if you have a short down here this choke would open and keep that short from um, um, reaching the uh, bottom cathode there however if you got it grounded directly like I'm saying you should do on most amplifiers and most modern thinkers uh, say that even though there's you know you get 50 uh, great texts even the two biggest minds I think in ham radio you know they argue and disagree over you know different small technicalities you get 50 people where they'll have you know different thoughts and stuff on it but in general you ground your grids and if you do that, make sure you have a glitch resistor in the plate. Again, because if you have a short, this is not going to be longer, no longer in the circuit to protect it from a short. And the SV220 and some other amplifiers don't have a glitch resistor in the plate. I think that's about all I wanted to go through today. Got more long with it than I thought. So that's going to be it for this one. Bye.